Hello, this is for day 106 of Bible in One Year and the Bible text for Samuel chapter 30 to 31 and then Luke chapter 13 verses 23 to 35. So at the beginning, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for every day of our lives. Thank you for all the blessings, for the salvation, um, for guiding us and for all the lessons that you've allowed us to learn. And Lord, we uh, ask that you would continue to guide us and direct our paths. Help us, Lord, to be obedient and to be um faithful to your word and lord um forgive us for our trespasses and um help us lord to overcome them to overcome our weaknesses and for us to be able to serve you more thank you lord and as we read your word kindly enlighten us uh, so that we could understand your messages and that we may apply them in our daily lives thank you lord as we pray in jesus name amen okay so first samuel chapter 30 and it came to pass when David and his men were come to Siglag on the third day that, that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captives that were therein, they, sl they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept, until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam the Jezreelites, Relites, and Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought hither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. So David went, he and the six hundred men that were with him, and came to the brook Besor, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued he and four hundred men, for two hundred abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook Besor. And they found an Egyptian in the field, and brought him to David, and gave him bread. And he did eat, and they made him drink water. And they gave him a piece of a cake of figs, and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him, for he had eaten no bread, nor drunk any water, three days and three nights. And David said unto him, To whom belongest thou, and whence art thou? And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite, and my master left me, because three days agone I fell sick. We made an invasion upon the south of the Garatites, and upon the coast which belonged to Judah, and upon the south of Caleb, and we burned Ziglag with fire. And David said to him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear unto me by God, that thou wilt neither kill me, nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will bring thee down to this company. And when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing, because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. And David smote them from the twilight, even unto the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man of them, save four hundred young men, which rode upon camels and fled. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives. And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. And David took all the flocks and, er and the herds, which they drave before those other cattle, and said, This is David's spoil. And David came to the two hundred men, which were so faint that they could not follow David, whom they had made also to abide at the brook Bezor. And they went forth to meet David, and to meet the people that were with him. And when David came near to the people, he saluted them. Then answered all the wicked men and men of Belial, of those that went with David, and said, Because they went not with us, we will not give them aught of the spoil that we have recovered, save to every man his wife and his children, that they may lead them away and depart. 
Then said David, You shall not do so, my brethren, with that which the Lord had given us who had who had preserved us and delivered a company that came against us into our hand. For who will hearken unto you in this matter? But as his part is that goeth down to the battle, so shall his part be that tarry yet by their stuff. They shall part alike. And it was so from that day forward that he made it a statute and an ordinance for Israel unto this day. And when David came to Siglag, his sent of the spoil, and to the elders of Judah, even to his friends, saying, Behold, a present for you of the spoil of the enemies of the Lord, to them which were in Bethel, and to them which were in South Ramoth, and to them which were in Jatir, and to them which were in Aror, and to them which were in Sipmoth, and to them which were in Ishtom, Eshtemoyah, Moa, Eshtemoyah, and to them which were in Rachel, and to them which were in the cities of the Jeramelites, and to them which were, which were in the cities of the Canaanites, and to them, to them which were in Horma, and to them which were in Chorasian, and to them which were in Atka, Atta, and to them which were in Hebron, and to all the places where David himself and his men were wont to hunt. First Samuel chapter 31 now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines, and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines followed hard upon Saul and upon his sons, and the Philistines slew Jonathan and Abinadab, and Malkishua Saul's sons. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was sore wounded of the archers. Then said Saul unto his armor-bearer, Draw thy sword, and trust me true with, therewith, lest these uncircumcised come, and trust me true, and abuse me. But his armor-bearer would not, for he was sore afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword, and fell upon it. And when his armor-bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise upon his sword, and died with him. So Saul died, and his three sons, and his armor-bearer, and all his men, the same day together. That same day together. And when the men of Israel that were on the other side of the valley, and they that were on the other side Jordan, saw that the men of Israel fled, and that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook the cities and fled, and the Philistines came and dwelt in them. And it came to pass on the morrow, when the Philistines came to strip the slain, that they found Saul and his three sons fallen in Mount Gilboa. And they cut off his head and stripped of his armor, and sent into the land of the Philistines round about, to publish it in the house of their idols and among the people. And they put his armor in the house of Ashtarot, and they fa fastened his body to the wall of Betshan. And when the inhabitants of Jabesh-Gilead heard of that which the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose, and went all night, and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons from the wall of Betshan, and came to Jabesh, and burnt them there. And they took their bones and buried them under a tree at Jabesh, and fasted seven days. We now read Luke chapter 13, verses 23 to 35. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate, for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in, and shall not be able. But once the master of the house is risen up, and has shut the, to the door, and he begin to stand without, and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Then shall he begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast thought in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of feet. When ye shall see Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves trust out, and they shall come from the east, and from the west, and from the north, and from the south, and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, there are last we shall be first, and there are first we shall be last. The same, there, the same day there came certain of the Pharisees, saying unto him, Get thee out, and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow, and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. 
O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets, and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would they have gathered thy children together, as a hen that gathered her brood under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And verily I say unto you, ye shall not see me, until the time come, when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Alright, so we're done for the Bible reading for day 106. Further reflection or something to share? I think I'd like to note, um, you know, I just noticed that uh, there have been many instances from the you know, previous readings and in the readings to come that whenever David is, you know, thinking of doing something like, uh, you know, attacking uh, the enemy, he would always seek the Lord's uh the Lord's plan or the Lord's will. Okay, he would uh, either ask the prophet, and then uh, you know uh, whatever God says he should do, that's what he does. Okay, although of course there were other times that he did not listen, and the consequences are not good. But uh, in most cases, he does uh, seek for the Lord's uh, plan, for the Lord's will, and he obeyed. He obeyed uh, through most of it. Okay, so as Christians, whenever we're planning of something or whenever we think of, you know, something that we'd like to do in our lives, we we should also seek the Lord's will about it. So we should pray, and then ask God if this is Your will, then uh, let me do it. If not, then I won't be doing it. Okay, so we should have that uh, particular trait as a Christian. That we should seek the Lord's will for every action that we're going to do. Okay, so that's it for today. Not really today because it's no longer April 16. Um, I'm like eight days late. Um, a lot of things happened in the previous weeks. Uh, I wasn't feeling well most of the time, most of the days in the previous week. So I was very late for this one. It's already April 23. <laughs> And this should have been done in April 16, but I'm just I'm going to try and catch up. Hopefully, before the month ends, I would have caught up with the Bible reading already. Okay, so that's it for this one, day 106, the Bible in one year, and we've read First Samuel chapters 30 to 31 and Luke 13, verses 23 to 35. Thank you and God bless.